Now, I'm, I'm sure many of you are completely puzzled by this uh, just random uh, project that suddenly appeared on my channel. Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, and I'm guessing most of you do know, but for those of you who have no idea what uh, Gramercy is, is a solo project by Beast Googlehausen. It's, uh, he did basically 12 episodes to this date, and I'm working as a guest on episode 13, which is the one that you're looking on the screen right now. Uh, this is uh, something similar to what we did with Flux just uh, about a month ago or two months ago now uh, with Sinu, where we swapped save games and he just did like a couple of guest episodes where he focused on one area of the city and just uh, did his thing. Uh, Jay was traveling out of town, so he, he asked me if I wanted to to take over uh, Gramercy for for a little bit and, uh, and do my thing. And this is exactly what I'm doing. I said yes like immediately after he asked me because uh, I really like this project I've been following since it, it started <laughs> and uh, you know this is kind of an excuse I, and I do get this question all the time it's an excuse to work on a big city project I haven't done uh, something any anywhere remotely to this well I guess I kind of did Cedar Valley like forever ago but that doesn't really count anymore because it was a very different uh, era uh, when it comes to City Skylines detailing, if, if, if that makes any sense. But yeah, um, I'm just uh, working on this uh, corner of the map, which is, uh, well, f first of all, if, if you don't watch the series, let me, let me just give you some context here, because maybe not everyone knows all the details about everything that's happening in the City Skylines community. So uh, Gramercy is uh, based on New York primarily, uh, heavily inspired by New York. But not necessarily the uh, Manhattan part of New York. Uh, if you don't know what, uh, you know, the different neighborhoods around New York City, uh, Manhattan will be like the big island where all the skyscrapers are. And uh, from, and this is what I gather from watching uh, Jay's uh, videos. It's not like his specific uh, uh, advice on, on what to say on this one. But uh, he, he mentioned a couple times that he's basing the city on the sort of the metro area of New York primarily. Uh, Brooklyn, Queens, uh, even like farther places farther away, but certainly not Manhattan, which is like the most iconic and obvious place. And uh, this is obviously not a copy of the city either. It's uh, just uh, using that as an inspiration and then coming up with uh, different combinations and, and, and just different ways on decorating this uh, different neighborhoods to make it look like uh, New York. Now, um, I do wanna point something out before I start commenting on what I'm doing on the screen. Uh, the fact that the time-lapse on this video seems may seem a little bit faster and it actually is faster because uh, <laughs> I messed up the recording when I was, I was so excited just to get it started. He sent me the save uh, and like a day after he sent me this, I've already put together this episode. I was like really in the zone when I was recording it. And, and I love the final result, by the way. I'm so happy with how it came out. Uh, but the problem is his city is like so complex and it's so full of stuff that the frame rate is probably the worst frame rate I've ever experienced in City Skylines. And all the cinematics that you saw at the beginning, I had to record at a lower frame rate that, uh, that you know, that way I can just speed them up in post and, and get some more cinematic, uh, smoother uh, clips for you to enjoy. Uh, but I forgot to turn off the feature. I, I have a, this workflow that's like very, it never changes because I know my projects. <laughs> uh, in this case, it changed and I forgot to, to alter the settings for the time lapse. So I recorded it a little bit faster than what I usually do. So hopefully it's not awful in terms of watchability. Uh, I did my, I, I slow it down a bit because it used to be much worse. But uh, I think uh, I think it's, uh, from what I've gathered already so far, it's it's pretty watchable. And uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm doing just in general in this episode is focus on this uh, neighborhood that's by the coast. That uh, it's a bit of a mix. This is like the, I don't know, like the top of the mixed zone, like the most mixed zone area ever, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And what I mean by that is that there's uh, commercial, of course, there's residential, but there's also industrial all in the same place. And, and this is kind of something uh, pretty... Uh, recurrent uh, across Gramercy in general and New York as well. The the area, for example, the Brooklyn area right by the East River, it's uh, full of factories uh, that are slowly being gentrified, hence the title of this video. And uh, you would find like this, like nasty factories full of trucks, 
right next to this like luxury apartment uh uh you know live and work lofts uh which is you know a great contrast so i was heavily inspired by that i looked at a lot of uh imagery from google maps primarily and uh also this was a great opportunity to try out new assets that i don't get to use that often i mean given the last couple of projects that i worked on uh you know with fbs being an airport uh, and only an airport uh miracle mile being a dead mall and the previous project i did being uh, just a tropical island i you know i don't get to use like all these urban buildings or i didn't get to use all most of these urban buildings uh primarily uh, a few i want to highlight here that i really really enjoyed using and they look absolutely fantastic as you can see from from the footages this pedestrian road here with the cobblestone and the lamps and the trees as well as this other uh, segment of road that has parking lots attached and they kind of uh, widens out at the intersections and you get this like beautiful gentle uh, you know handicap ramps as well which look absolutely fantastic. This is exactly the design that you see in places like this. Uh, new development in, in these types of neighborhoods brings out or makes the city, you know, in order to, to uh, increase or enhance, not enhance, that's not the word I'm looking for. Basically promote or incentivize, incentivize is where I was looking for. Uh, they do uh, add a lot of uh, these roads. One fun fact about uh, the roads that have these extended, uh, you know, sidewalks, on uh, the corner streets is they usually do that to make people slow down basically uh you there's a lot of uh, pedestrian friendly areas in these types of places so you don't want cars traveling at a million miles an hour uh by extending the sidewalks at the intersection people tend to stop there, there's studies about this and that's uh that's usually why you'll find uh that sort of configuration of uh, roads in places like this uh, on top of that, it has some uh, beautiful uh, planters every every couple meters, I guess, or every couple of feet. But uh, the trees that come up with these roads are not amazing, so I ended up disabling them and manually adding all the privet trees. So it's possible that in many of these shots you will see that the tree uh, doesn't quite align the planter, because every time you connect another road to these roads, uh, things get you know moved out of place. So I did my best to to put everything back where it belong, uh, and I. I think I did it to like 90% of effectiveness. <laughs> uh, so in the cinematics, I think I've spotted like one or two that are off and it's just like, Ugh, I forgot to like fix that, but it's, it's not, it's not too bad. Now this uh, parking lot over here next to this uh, semi-luxury building, the idea behind it is, and, and this is not something that's so common in New York City, or at least from the research that I did and then, you know, the few times I actually been in the city and walked this neighborhoods, uh, I realized that th even though they're not as common, like I was saying, most people definitely will uh, get around through, you know, public transportation. That's most likely the fastest way or the most efficient way to, to, to go from point A to point B inside the city. Uh, that being said, there's still people who drive cars in New York, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, I guess they do need a place to park. There's a lot of street parking and I'm sure that's very limited. But if you can afford uh, a luxury apartment, just like that one, uh, whether you rent it or you actually own the place, uh, maybe you have enough uh, disposable income even to, to have an electric car. And having an EV charging spot is kind of, uh, you know, a... A must so uh, that was a, a good excuse for me to to add a few of those uh, assets they do look amazing uh, of course we we also had some handicap spots as well but uh, i keep doing this thing where i talk about things that already happen <laughs> and uh, they don't make that much sense uh, if they're not on, on on video just in front of you now this uh this thing what that i'm doing here is uh construction zone it it appears that there's one of these every other block they're just everywhere they shut down the whole lane and i use uh, traffic president to sort of block traffic from from using that lane and i also had to sort of keep it you know the use of of, of props to a minimum because uh, this project is huge and well b school housing is going to need every single one of those props and remember how we you know we always complain about props uh, being a thing, <laughs> a very limiting thing for, for detail work. So I had to like be very careful about that. Not only that, he specified that I should be careful using segments too, because you know, that's how big the project will turn out to be. So, uh, 
uh, I did my best to to sort of minimize the the impact uh, so that he can continue building on on this on this uh, map for for quite some time. The the plaza that you saw at the beginning of the episode, by the way, that's like the fa my favorite part from this whole episode, and I didn't get to talk about it because I was just ranting about something else. But that uh, whole area was all made with segments. Uh, these uh, concrete walls that I've been using a lot and or abusing, I guess. There's new versions of that, by the way, in the workshop. Make make sure to check them out. There's like a brick. Uh, like red brick version and like a rocky kind of version of that as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited uh, to, to see more of those and to even try those specific ones uh, in future projects. But uh, for the time being, I'm, I'm continuing uh, my my detail efforts here on this uh, industrial warehouse. Nothing too crazy, just uh, using the building that uh, Jay already had put in place. I keep switching back between B school housing and Jay, so you know what I mean when I say either of those uh, things. Um, I realized that I had the logo uh, for the Sim Corporation in, in the um, in the props, so I ended up adding that logo, uh, just branding the whole place uh, on on every uh, available wall. Uh, here, I'm also building like a little tiny park on this corner instead of just filling it with more buildings. I figured, hey, let's put some trees in here because you know, for the most part, they do turn down uh, buildings just to make room for for smaller green spaces. Which I think is uh, what people ultimately want to, to to see, and and you know, it's a, definitely a nice place to to hang out <laughs> after work. Uh, but at the same time, you can find these like warehouses with heavy industrial traffic, and I kind of mentioned this uh, a couple times throughout this episode. It's uh, it's really interesting to see the contrast between all these uh, types of buildings, and eventually, most likely, these buildings will be turned into uh, some sort of uh, live workspace or trendy hipster coffee shops or just you name it you can I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a neighborhood like that in every city now and uh, I don't know if that's like I'll be interesting to know if that's like a trend that will eventually fade out and no one's gonna care about that like malls like malls used to be the thing and uh, in many places they're still thriving which is crazy but in many others, primarily across the U.S., they're just completely dead and getting even more dead, if that's even possible. Finally, uh, in the last uh, few minutes of this episode, I'm focusing my detailing efforts on this uh, complex that uh, features two towers and a attached parking lot. This were actually made by Jay. I haven't like even. I think I only had to move them because uh, when I was upgrading some of these roads, they were going to be despawning. But um, I was just trying to keep things really simple in terms of uh, aesthetics, having this uh, little a valet parking kind of roundabout situation and also I put that uh, rooftop like green rooftop on on that office complex uh, that had a perfect shape and uh, just combining a few of the uh, dock assets from uh, Ronix just to be able to elevate many of those props and just adding mostly vegetation and not a whole lot of props to this uh, to this build just you know keep it uh, keep the prop usage to a minimum, like I mentioned just a, a few seconds ago. But uh, in the next episode, I'm going to be focusing on uh, just uh, filling in some of the gaps that Jay left across this area to sort of keep this uh, neighborhood pretty much done so he can move on to more interesting uh, parts of the city. And uh, in terms of scheduling, the next uh, episode of Gramercy, episode 14, uh, I'm pretty sure it will take place a week from now. So uh, stay tuned. I'm probably going to add a comment if, if that changes uh, just right below this one. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure at the time of this recording. But if you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving this video a like. That's very much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel and haven't already, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe. That way you're notified next time I post a video. But uh, that's pretty much all for now. Enjoy these cinematics. And uh, yeah, I really hope to see you in the next one.